In this final video covering the Lafayette HA700, I'm going to show a, a series of uh, receiver add-ons or adjuncts. Uh, this Q multiplier actually came with the radio and uh, it works quite well with it, but it doesn't show off what a Q multiplier can really do to a poor receiver. And the reason for that is this receiver already has pretty good selectivity. I think they were trying to show off their uh, ceramic filters with this receiver. It's actually too narrow for AM. And uh, my best use of a Q multiplier has been in AM, specifically in mobile AM, to reduce noise from the car. And this does not show that off. Now, remember I showed the little AR3, which is a 50s vintage uh, beginner's receiver, with the older Heathkit Q multiplier. Now here's a place where a Q multiplier could really help a receiver because this guy's got about a 10 kilohertz bandwidth and uh, the Q multiplier greatly sharpens its AM performance and allows it to have uh, almost single signal CW selectivity. So this is a very effective use of a Q multiplier on a uh, probably a beginner's uh, first, you know, first receiver. Not showing so much here. It does help CW, and you'll see that. It does sharpen up single sideband, you'll see that. But it does nothing for AM. So another area that the receiver lacks in, and uh, some of uh, the receivers had these and some didn't, was the crystal calibrator. Typically, a uh, crystal calibrator allowed you to do the basic calibration on the dial. I'm doing the best I can to uh, align this radio to make sure it works with its set points with its band spread dial. But it's crude at best. Without a counter, you really don't know what frequency you're on. So people used to use these crystals, surplus crystals usually, like this 200 kilohertz crystal, to give you a little blip every 200 kilohertz. So I'm going to show off a crystal calibrator with the receiver in this video so as well. So let's take a look at a uh, crystal calibrator. Typically a calibrator is either a 100 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, sometimes 200 kilohertz oscillator. And the oscillator wants to be rich in harmonics. Uh, having a square wave with a fast rising edge indicates that uh, a very rich harmonic energy is going to come out. And typically you use a, a low value coupling capacitor that will encourage the higher frequency harmonics so that you get 100 kilohertz blips all the way up the band. So there's a couple different ways to use a crystal calibrator with a receiver. Uh, one way is to just simply use the main tuning dial and every 100 kilohertz you should get a blip. At 1.6 megahertz right at the top of the AM band here. 1.7 1.8, and so on. So every 100 kilohertz you're getting a marker. That's not normally the way you use it with a receiver like this though. Uh, let's say you want to make sure you're not outside the ham band. So the more typical way to use the uh, crystal calibrator is to make sure you're not going outside the band edge. So in this case 40 meters down here is where the band edge is here. <coughs> And we're just trying to make sure we're not going outside the edge. Now, if we did our calibration right, we should be seeing another blip up here at 7.1. Okay? So every 100 kilohertz, you're going to see, you know, the, the blip. And this is uh, very useful uh, for a receiver like this, where you don't have a frequency counter readout. You don't have a direct readout of your frequency. Now, typically these crystal calibrators either came with the set, and there was a separate switch to turn it on and off, or it was an external type thing in a small box like this, and you would couple it close to the receiver's antenna, and you'd get the blip. I'm just using a T, and I'm teeing it 
uh, with a very small coupling capacitor right into the antenna terminals. But uh, useful for a receiver like this where you don't exactly know if you're at the edge of the band and you're trying to use it as a ham uh, receiver. It's also useful for making sure you're finding the right shortwave frequency. You want to know that uh, a shortwave station is on a certain frequency. So most of these crystal calibrator circuits were simply 100 kilohertz crystal of some kind, or 200 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz, and one or two transistors, or perhaps logic gates. Those would work very well, like uh, inverter gates, or uh, you can use different types of uh, dividers, like the uh, 7473 or 7474 divider, and uh, that can uh, take a higher frequency crystal and divide it down to, say, 100 kilohertz. Now you could use a 1 megahertz rock or a 2 megahertz rock and divide it down using a CMOS divider. Anyway, crystal calibrator. You may remember that we removed a coaxial cable that attached up here on the circuit board somewhere and it came out the original hole where the antenna connector was. Um, like many of these uh, hobby type receivers of the uh, 50s, 60s and uh, early 70s, um, they used an RCA phono jack. An RCA phono jack is the antenna connector. Now the engineer that uh, that owned this realized that was kind of silly and he has mounted his own SO239 connector on here, a proper antenna connector. And he left the hole for the original antenna connector open and that's where he ran his Q multiplier cable out. Now I decided to add a phono jack back in just for the Q multiplier and I'm going to run a coaxial cable from this back to uh, the place where you're supposed to hook up a Q multiplier, which is the plate of the mixer tube. In other words, we are going to hook up to the plate of the uh, frequency changer tube, which is the 6BL8, and that's, uh, that's pin 6. And uh, we have to realize that there's a couple hundred volts on that point. 125 volts is what they say, but it's a little higher than that. So if you just run this cable to this connector and you accidentally hook something up to that connector, you'd have 125 or 130 volts DC there. We don't want to do that. And he didn't want to do that either. He cleverly just ran the coax cable out and it went straight into the Q multiplier that has a coupling capacitor. So no problem. But if we put a connector there, we're going to have to add a series coupling capacitor between the center and the uh, coax for safety. So remember, you have to have that coupling capacitor. I'm going to mount it right up near the mixer plate. I'm not going to put it back here. The other thing you have to realize is when you add this little amount of coax here, and uh, it is certainly a, a transmission line, but it is also a capacitor. So um, at you know 20 or 30 picofarads per foot, we're adding probably almost 20 picofarads of capacitance just to get to the back. So that is going to mistune that original transformer in MF1. Remember MF1 was our, our filter assembly? So we're going to have to touch that up and retune it once we add this. Now, we don't actually tune it all the way to the end, uh, the Q multiplier. We tune it to the end of the radio so that we can keep this connector on there unterminated and it's properly uh, it's properly peaked. The Q multiplier will take care of any mistuning from this point on, hopefully. So I've added a capacitor off the end of the coax down to the plate of the mixer. And back here we have the coax attached now to the phono connector. So you might remember that we had to tune out the coax that was inside the receiver going out to the little connector. It was only about a foot long, but uh, it did a lot. 
it did take the gain down and we had to readjust the first filter in order to get the gain back. So what are we doing now that we have this nice three foot piece of coax uh, that's connecting the actual Q multiplier to the back of the receiver? Isn't that going to detune it also? Absolutely. And uh, we can't really handle that by retuning the receiver because you might not have the Q multiplier attached all the time. Um, and uh, if you tuned it with the Q multiplier attached all the time and then you disconnected the Q multiplier, that would take the gain of the receiver way down. So how do we handle that little three foot piece of coax? And the way that's done, if you look at the schematic, you have a completely separate coil at the output of the Q multiplier. And his only job is to resonate against the capacitance of the three foot piece of wire, or how, however long it is, and tune it out, effectively making a parallel tuned circuit uh, that resonates out that piece of coax so it's not part of the circuit anymore. So we've taken care of the little one foot piece in the receiver by retuning the receiver. And now we're taking care of the three foot piece externally by tuning the separate coil inside the Q multiplier. So that's why the Q multiplier has two coils. One is the active coil uh, for the feedback causing the negative resistance that uh, makes the Q multiplier work. And the other is simply to tune out that excess coax that attaches the Q multiplier to the receiver. See how the Q multiplier gets rid of uh, the noise and interference? So this is DDH in Germany. It's a weather service on 11038. I'm going to turn on the uh, Q multiplier. You can see how that gets rid of the, the background noise. Settles it down. Okay, that's without. The dramatic improvement that you get with an AM signal is not really seen in this receiver because the receiver is already too narrow for AM. But if you had your typical 10 kilohertz wide AM receiver and you put a Q multiplier on it, it's just amazing what it will do with communications quality AM, just bringing the signal up out of the noise. Anyway, okay on uh, 41 and uh, the, uh, the, the rain and also that. So the Q multiplier anyway. can help single uh, sideband as well. And make a call when you want me to, and uh, we'll stand by, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to bring a few check-ins. Uh, W0BOW from W4OBY. So Q multipliers have uh, capacitors too that might need to be replaced. Also, uh, when you're when you get a hold of an old one, it probably is no longer centered at 455 kilohertz. So put the tuning dial in the center, put it on uh, peak, let it warm up. Okay, put the peak on. If it's not centered, then you'll do, adjust it and make sure. So 
so the way that you the way that you actually tune the Q multiplier is you tune to an AM station. So I'm just going to tune to an AM station, go down to an AM, the AM band, go to AM, tune in a signal. Make sure you're centered on the signal. Turn on the Q multiplier. Turn on the Q multiplier with the signal tuned in. Pretty close. I'm not going to touch that. India Sugar Zero Delta Charlie Radio Quartet. Kilo Charlie Four Charlie Yankee Oscar. You are a five of four QS Baker. Roger. So this is a crystal controlled converter that is attached to the uh, front end of the Lafayette receiver. It converts uh, 21 to 21.5, 15 meters, 21 to 21.5, down to 3.5 to 4.0. 80 meter band. Gives you the stability of 80 meters, but high sensitivity on 15. So down in the CW portion of 15 meters, the converter works good as well. Uh, that's uh, digital, of course. You'd think there'd be a little DX on here. There's a little bit of DX coming in. Oh, there's people out there. That's a couple stations going. With a good antenna, of course, this would work better. I'm just using it on a 40 meter dipole. But it shows how a crystal control converter can allow a simpler receiver like this to work well at, at high frequency by employing a lower frequency band like 80 meters. Okay, I did promise to uh, give the backstory on this receiver. I've got a few notes here. I talked to the uh, to the engineer that actually uh, repaired the receiver. Um, let's call him Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey uh, was uh, one of those wonder kid uh, computer and radio kids uh, in the in the early 70s um, when he was in junior high school. Um, he uh, was already uh, programming PDP-11 computers and so on. So he already was uh, quite a uh, wonder kid uh, type uh, technician uh, as, as a kid. Um, 
he claims that he got this receiver at a local surplus uh, store. Now, uh, Jeffrey brought up in Levittown, Long Island, okay? So you guys have to think of some of the mom and pop type surplus and radio stores that were around at that time. He mentioned something like Edley's or LD or something like that. You guys that are from that area can fill me in on what that uh, junk shop or, or whatever shop would have been where he would have picked up this receiver. It was broken at the time. They had gone as far as to order the replacement transformer. So they had the, the replacement transformer in hand, but they were scared to death in the shop to actually mount it in the radio. So he picked up the radio with his dad. I think they paid 20 or $30 for the radio, the Q multiplier, and the brand new transformer waiting to go in. This part of Long Island was known for a lot of engineers. Uh, Grumman was new. And uh, Jeffrey was your typical uh, junior high student that was already soldering, you know, probably using something like this. Uh, you know, was destined to be an engineer. He was uh, seen around the BOCES uh, campus that was nearby, um, frequented uh, some of the surplus and mom and pop radio shops on the island. And, uh, he claims he went out, uh, well, he did some troubleshooting and saw that the diodes in the, uh, in the radio were shorted. They were these kind of these off-color, dark red diodes. You might remember those. They were shorted, and that had caused the transformer to bubble over and so on. But um, he claims he went out and found a bridge rectifier somewhere and installed that in there. But I have proof otherwise. Um, this uh, looks like he found a couple of surplus diodes and put those uh, in there and uh, soldered it and got the, res the new transformer installed, did the wiring, and I believe that if I would have brought this receiver up very slowly on a Variac, we probably would have heard some noise out of it. But I'm glad I didn't take that chance because at that time I did not know if that transformer was the original that had bubbled over or if it was indeed a new transformer. Now I know it was a new transformer, and uh, I've cleaned it up a little bit, and uh, I think we brought it up the right way. But anyway, you guys wanted to know, you know, that, you know, this kid was brought up around Beth Page, you know, all of the stuff on the island that, uh, that would have fostered a young engineering mind. So Jeff today is just about retirement age. Uh, he's had an illustrious uh, career in radio and electronics including uh, algorithms for software-defined receivers, etc. So, there's your backstory on the receiver. So I hope you've enjoyed this final installation on the Lafayette HA700 Dream Receiver. I've enjoyed uh, putting this together and uh, doing a little bit of restoration work instead of uh, you know, building something from scratch or doing a, a theory type uh, of presentation. It's nice to sometimes get the soldering iron warmed up and restore a radio and try to bring it back to full operating conditions.